Hey, what's happening? I'm Miles Kennedy, and you're watching CMS TV. little bit of kingdom come right there that was uh do you like it and i know what i like i like talking to this guy for the first time and i can't believe in all the years i've been doing this i've never come across him but i'm an absolute fan loved him in lynch mob loved him in montrose loved him in this new band desert dragon love him in kingdom come he is keith st john keith how are you man chris i'm doing great man i'm here in the uh, the desert winter of lovely Las Vegas, Nevada. Very and nice. uh, thank you for all the kind words. Uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to you as well. It has Absolutely. been too many years without connecting here, but we're finally doing it. We're finally doing it. Now we had a, we had a bump in the road, I think a, a while ago, a month ago, we were supposed to talk and it didn't we work were, out or yeah. something. Yeah, something happened, but all good. We got it now. Now, I don't know, Keith, do you know Eric, who is Stephen Piercy's guitar player? Um, I don't no. think he does. No, we're not friends. But how you doing, buddy? <laughs> we are now. friends. No, uh, no, I just have I've never uh, hung out with you, buddy. How, how's everything going, man? It's going very well. I'm impressed, man. You sound amazing with Kingdom Come there. Oh, thank you, man. Well, that was um, I've never seen footage from that particular show, but I recognize it. That was sort of the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back with the uh, you know, what, what was going on. Yeah, going on. Mm -hmm. You know, James uh, Kotak has had some health situations over the last year, and they've really been affecting his playing. And, um, you know, everybody in the band really wanted him to be able to continue and play. But, you know, he, he's just got to sort some things out and wait for some stuff in his body to, to heal where he has the strength to uh, to play the songs at tempo, I, I guess I should say, after we heard that <laughs> version of Do You Like It. Um, <laughs> I heard the, the beat one miss beat, but yeah, whatever, man. You sound amazing. So, you know, it, I don't know. I was impressed. That was the ballad version of, of Do You Like It. So, <laughs> and I had that yeah. record as a kid. You know, I had the Kingdom Come record. So, sure. Yeah. No, that, those are cool records, man. They're, they're amazing. It's like those first two. It's like the band Montrose, which oddly enough, both James and I had some, uh, some tenure and uh you know that first record is like the rock and roll bible and then a couple songs off the second record and then after that the you know the fourth fifth and sixth records were just kind of out there somewhere and even fans don't really know too many songs off of those i think it's kind of the same thing for kingdom come in a way sure. but uh sure. yeah cool well let me ask you keith since we're talking kingdom come and we will definitely get to desert dragon here in a minute but um uh, with Kingdom Come, I mean, for, for people that don't know, which is most, Kingdom Come has a huge history. You know, Lenny continued on without the band that you're playing with and has 15 different records, you know, post post that lineup. And when I say 15, I think that's really the number is 15 that's, that records. That probably is, man. Yeah. There's, there's tons. So for you, you know, stepping into that, did you have reservations stepping into a band that had been more or less almost like a Megadeth type project where Lenny was the was the Dave Mustaine of the band? Yeah. No, and I had enough sort of I guess experience in the industry as soon as they asked me to do it to say, you know, well ask your singer and really, I mean really go to the mat and, and pick his brain and make sure he doesn't want to do this. You know, right. I know he announced his retirement, but people change their mind when the original members show up and want to do something, you know, mm. um, especially with some really good projected plans and, and um, some of the powers that be are, are going to help the band get back on the map. Um, so they did. And we sort of started planning and getting some stuff ready. And six months later, I said, hey, guys, 
call Lenny again now, you know, you've had some stuff released in the press and really, you know, go there with him again and make sure he doesn't want to do this. Sure. Cause you know, most of the time people's opinions change when this stuff comes up, but sure enough, um, he said, no, you know, I give you guys my, my full blessing and, uh, you know, I wish you luck, but I'm retired and I don't, I don't feel like doing this anymore. Right. On. And, uh, so I embarked on a new, uh, onto a new boat on a new ship that started sailing and, you know, James had been a good friend over the years since like sometime in the nineties, you know, we, we jammed on different things, did, did different projects and stuff. And, um, He's a good looking singer. forward to actually doing something, you know, uh, out on the map uh, that people were going to see. So, um, you know, I enjoyed getting it together with those guys and look forward to it. And uh, I will tell you one story, though. Our very okay. first show was up in Seattle. And it was the beginning of a, uh, of a grueling kind of ground tour that we wanted to start out with a couple of months uh, just, you know, doing clubs. Just right. to get the band kind of back up and playing and rehearsed because you know some of the guys really weren't doing much over the years right right and nobody told me this but marco wolf lenny's brother is pretty much a spitting image of lenny looks I mean, a lot yeah. like him and Sounds he lives like him up too. there he lives up there and um uh, when I came out onto the stage right in the middle of the first song, I saw this guy, you know, three people in front of me in the audience that looked just like Lenny. I'm like, wait a minute, man. <laughs> uh, what's going on? Did he really come out? I was a little freaked out. And then, you know, the guy after the show, I still didn't know it wasn't him, came up and wrapped his arms around me and gave me a big hug. And, you know, he congratulated me and told me how good I was doing. And then, in a few minutes, I learned that it was his brother, you know, right. who looks just like a Marco. But that was a really funny, funny night for me the whole time, just thinking Lenny was actually out in the audience at the first show. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, what is the status of Kingdom Come as a as a band? Is it just a live thing? Is it are you guys writing material to release a Kingdom Come record or, or where, where are you at with that? It's gone back and forth. Uh, Rick Steyer and I have probably put more material together than any other combination because we both live in L.A. Okay. Um, and we were working with James, too, but James kind of... James is, is um, long story short, he, he's back down in Louisiana right now, uh, Louisville right now. Okay. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, which is his hometown. And he's trying to get, you know, he's got some broken bones and all kinds of stuff going on that, you know, right. he had an accident and he's just trying to get himself back together before... You know, he comes back and, and tries to get back into the fold. So okay. in the meantime, um, and the other guys, uh, Danny Stagg and J.B. Frank, they live in different cities. One's in Jacksonville, one's in Pittsburgh. And they're writing and they're sending over ideas all the time. I mean, we have communication back and forth. So if we can put some of this stuff together and actually get the whole band in a studio for sure. you know a couple of weeks or whatnot, I think we can come out of, the, out of it with an album. Okay, so, Very. I'm hoping. Sure, definitely. Well, it's not like you're sitting sitting back though and just waiting for shit to happen either, because you have. You, in the meantime, you you have Desert Dragon, which um just put out a release what a month or a little over a month ago, I guess. Um, yeah. With this side of heaven, which if people have not heard it yet, go and give it a listen over on uh, Spotify or wherever, because it is. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent release. And if you like classic, classic metal that that just strong eighties sounding metal, it is fantastic. So uh why don't we why don't we talk a little bit about that, Keith? There, there it is. is. There it is. Look at that. Behold. Yeah, Not there great. it is. No, we can see it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Very I good. can smell it. Hold it up there. <laughs> no, you can hear the plastic uh, <laughs> crinkling. That's right. <laughs> well, Keith, uh, tell us a little bit about um, not only this band and this album, but you know your involvement as well as how you got involved with with these guys and and put this band you know out out on the map. Uh, you know, ever since um, really kind of the late nineties. Uh, you know, there's always been bands and guys and, you know, writers from around the globe getting in touch and saying, hey, you want to do this and we want to do that. And, you know, most of the time, it's not really going to be 
a perfect matchup for you know what I want to do at the time, or it's right. kind of out of my style range or out of my wheelhouse. Um, when Greg Patnode, the leader of that band, um, uh, sent me his first demos, it was at a time when I was kind of, you know, maybe feeling a little bit burnt and and uh, open to be appreciative of okay. where they were at, you know, and where they were at was kind of more like an early seventies kind of band. Sure. That was really rootsy, you know, and right. You couldn't call this band a metal band by any means. Although, you know, some of their songs allude to, you know, some heaviness and mm -hmm. they got some pretty heavy guitars, but it's still, you know, it's basically a, a rock band with some progressive pieces. You know, I, right. I, uh, I liken them to like a little bit of ELP and yes and um, Kansas, you know, some of okay. the songs are that way. And even though there's one or two tracks, you know, that are right up the middle, you know, Deep Purple meets Free or something. But it really allowed me to sing in a way that I haven't in a really long time and get back to the roots and just kind of expand on that is my story. And, um, I was looking forward to that. I was like, this is really fresh. And Greg was kind of letting me come by and just kind of, you know, chop up the canvas and move things around to, to fit into what I thought was a logical, you know, song structure each time. Right. You know, typical singer stuff. And uh, that was easy and, and felt good. You know, um, his level of sort of just openness and cooperation to me just coming in with these these ideas. I didn't want to come in and just, you know, kind of snowplow right. he had out out and just do my thing. I, I wanted to take the elements that I thought they were doing that could be really brilliant that reminded me of some of my heroes from back then. Sure. You know, my bands that I really loved. And I was like, wow, we could put this together and I can actually do this. And it would be, you know, almost be like being in something like Kansas meets sweet meets you know, with Paul Rogers singing or something, you know what I mean? So right, yeah. I was like, this is a really cool fun house, you know, candy store to be in and do this stuff. And that's how it started. And, you know, he wound up having enough for a whole record. And the other guys he was working with wound up being really cool and eclectic and a different melting pot in their own way too. I was like, this is almost like those bands in the sixties that, you know, those guys didn't go grow up playing rock and roll. And right. they came together with different genres and made this melting pot. And that's kind of what Desert Dragon is. So, right. you know, it was really cool to be a part of it. I didn't have any expectations um, of where it was going to go. But I okay. uh, was just kind of having a good time with it. And uh, and uh, hopefully there's some songs on there that some people will dig. Yeah. And, how uh, how How see. for you, you know, you you've the bulk of your career that people know. You know the, the obviously the the lynch mob and kingdom come and Montrose and whatnot. You stepped into other people's material. How yes. important was it that stepping into this that you could express yourself creatively? You know, instead of just stepping into whoever their last singer was and doing his thing. Well, honestly, uh, you know the career bands that I was in that you mentioned. I just kind of was was rolling with the flow and okay. was kind of a hippie in those situations, but I'm writing all the time. I mean, okay. that's what I love. I love being in the studio. I love I love being creative and I love writing. And you know, sometimes I kick myself in the teeth a little bit because when I do put stuff out and I do write with people or put stuff my own out, it always does great and it always does good things for my life. So. Um, you know, a lot of times artist types aren't good manager types. And, right. uh, you know, I'm glad now maybe at these more mid years and stuff to uh, to be writing a lot more. And right. um, eventually I kind of found that outlet uh, with my other writing partner, Doug Aldridge. And um, I don't know if you're aware yeah. of that band, Burning Rain. We Burning have. Rain, of course. Yeah. Because of our kind of day job gigs. I mean, we bands, uh, we you know, put out a record on the average, maybe once every four years or something. Sure. So um, it's not that often and we haven't done that much extensive touring because we've most of the time we've been in like those bands you mentioned mm -hmm. um, and, and had to just, 
stay with the program and to stay in those bands. Um, I would have liked to do a lot more touring with Burning Rain, but and we still might in the future. Um, so it's yeah, it's been a mixed bag. It's been a mixed bag of having fun, hanging out with the old school big time rock stars and you know learning a lot from them and playing really fun gigs in front, front, of, sure. front of really fun crowds and uh also being able to write as much as possible and i'm still struggling to balance the same thing right you know? definitely well and, and you know the interesting thing even even like with with doug and burning rain which was which is you guys's band now doug is pretty unless i've heard wrong doug is locked in with dead daisies and that's kind of the deal with dead daisies is you don't do anything else when you're in dead daisies right yeah you know you know and so that just happened to be the fate of course right. and maybe that's the universe you know trying to knock on my head and say hey dude you don't get it yet let me really <laughs> let me really send this home for you now right <laughs> it's not just uh you know when the band has a break it's also like well we really kind of don't want you to you know do too much unless we say it's okay sure. but uh but we're talking we're actually talking uh recently because uh coincidentally uh that you and i are talking now the daisies is going to be on a break for uh some time right now okay. so we may be able to squeeze something in let's see okay you know, excellent um, doug just did the um the uh, metal hall of fame right that's um, right with me and um as a result in talking to the owner pat um he wanted to also induct doug so that worked out really good yeah but you know we had to talk about it and how it was going to be presented and make sure that it would work for the daisies management etc and sure. i got that you know you need to be respectful and uh mm -hmm. keep, keep everything you know on the straight and narrow you know i get it i would do the right. same thing no i get it too I, it makes sense now i know with with back to desert dragon for a minute uh you worked with ron Nev ne nevison if i can speak you were working with him to flesh out the sound wow that's uh that's a certainly uh, a great name <laughs> that's a big name yeah it's huge but uh honestly i wasn't involved with that that was that was pretty much greg's okay greg's contact and his thing and uh but you got to be happy with the result though oh yeah absolutely absolutely big time yeah. you know ron's a, a master you know mm -hmm. and a huge legend i would have loved to you know have been there and spent some time with him myself oh yeah definitely man well, dude, what are the um, with Desert Dragon and I guess with Kingdom Come as well? What are the um, touring opportunities looking like? It's a, it's a weird time now for touring because every band known to man is out there, you know. So you know, all at the same time. So what kind of opportunities are out there, or what are you guys looking at for twenty twenty three and you know and beyond? Kingdom Come is currently being handled by Arm A R M. Okay. Uh, it's John Gamagal and company, and we're waiting to see, you know, what's going to map out here. We have a lot of weekend warrior stuff, you know, just mm -hmm. go out and do one or two and come home, uh, which works sort of for me right now because I'm doing uh, the Rating the Rock Vault show in Las Vegas. Sure. With Sir Harry, and right. um, which is fun, but, you know, once again, like you say, that's doing other people's music. Right. So, and, um, and that's one step back further, you know, you're mm -hmm. playing covers. I I'm playing with a lot of friends. You know, there's a lot of cool people in that act and reading the rock vault. Todd Kearns is one of the other singers. And sure. Todd Dammit. Oni is one of the other sing singers. Jizzy's one of the other singers. Yeah. Um, is John Bazaha still in that from the he's Babies? He's not. He's not. But okay. when uh, the show first came back, back at the end of May last year, he was. He did start it off, but um, he was only in for about a, a two or three weeks. Yeah. Uh, another great singer, great guy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. He's great. I, I hope he comes back sometime soon. And Bloss is on drums. Right. So Bloss is also now in Kingdom Come because he's okay. stepped in for James. So promoters and buyers and stuff, I think, are getting used to that idea. And I'm trying to help get some promotion, uh, promotional material together sure. for them so that they can present that. I think that's a strong package as well. Absolutely. If we needed someone to step in for James for now. Bloss is also the current drummer in Burning Rain. Okay. And Bloss is also playing on the Keith St. John solo stuff right now, which for me, 
um, is my passion, and I got to get that stuff out. And sure. you know, above and beyond anything, it's just getting my budget together and getting the time together, doing all this other stuff. But right, um, do you occurs. have a do you have a thought on that? Like a timeline thought on that? Man, I keep saying that I do, and I keep putting my foot in my mouth. So uh, <laughs> you know, these things keep coming up. Uh, I would love to. I'd love to get it out by the beginning of the summer. Okay. Say that if that could happen, I think it can. I have all the elements. Part of the reason I came out to Vegas and agreed to do raiding the rock vault is because um, a Bloss was playing in the show and he was going to be able to be here, and I'd have access to us going in the studio more often. Sure. And um, and also a whole bunch of other people have moved from LA to to Vegas recently. Right. There's people I'm still discovering out here that I had no idea are out here. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's almost like Vegas is the new LA, right? It sort of is starting to feel like that. I had no idea. Stephen Pierce, he lives there now. That's true. That's true. We talked to Stephen about um, possibly coming down and doing Rock Hall. There were a couple wow. of conversations. So I don't know if that'll happen or where, where it'll go, but I, I don't know if that would be Stephen's thing. You know, you got to. <laughs> you know, he did something at uh, Vamp the other night. He did a, a I think it might have been a benefit or something that was going on there. I heard about that. Yeah, that looked fun. I think Todd yeah. went and a couple other guys, and they were they were talking about it backstage. Sure, very cool, man. So, yeah, well, man. well, Keith, um, obviously, man, a lot going on. The current project, Desert Dragon, is out there this side of heaven. Go buy. Yes. It. Where can where can people buy it? I don't even want to tell them to go to. <laughs> The streaming sites because that does you guys no good. So where well, can they buy it? They can go to the website and buy it. All right. You know, www.desertdragon.com. Okay. Uh, and they can find it there, and that's that's the best place I know to go because I'm not exactly sure what's going on with where Greg's okay. got it placed right now too. Um, it, you know, it should be out there on like you said all the streaming sites, but uh, sure. I think you can buy it on iTunes. I think you can okay. buy it on Amazon. Oh, well, but, in that case, go there and buy it. But don't, you know, we, we say this every single time with every interview. We tell people to buy it because, let's face it, Spotify, yeah, it's great that everybody can hear it. But when's the last time you got a Spotify check that was big enough to pay for a DoorDash order? <laughs> right? Never. When is, the, when is the time anybody has? I, yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, so one thing about Desert Dragon, just a, a quick plug. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. We, uh, you know, we're, I, I told Greg I think it's a better idea for this record anyway, an unknown band, to really try the um, single release one at a time thing to kind of get mm -hmm. it out there and to really concentrate on some videos. Sure. So we got this song called Swamp Thing. Right. I heard this riff and Greg has... Greg has some really, really, um, some genius guitar riffs, you know? Okay. He, you know, he doesn't have a boatload of experience in the business, but I mean, some of this music he comes up with, you would never expect to hear. He's he kind of got like a Leslie West kind of Mississippi queen, but a different version of that, you know? Like, sure. And, um, so, uh, I wrote this thing with him, called it Swamp Thing, and it kind of has... It alludes to the fact that Swamp Thing is this thing that gets created to like some kind of space radiation and almost turns into like a, a Godzilla character, you know, okay. where he's like, you know, just destroying cities. But right. at the same time, he's this really nice guy, you know, that people would like to sit down and have a cup of tea with, you know, kind of a thing. And, sure. um, and uh, so we started the video. I have some friends out at Paramount Ranch in... Uh, in uh we got in Gora Hills out of California. We did the first okay. shots the other day. And it, since it starts out with a real country feel, it starts out with a, a little Jew harp going twang 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 and right. some crickets. And then uh he comes in with his guitar lick. So I I had him put on these old stonewashed overalls and a straw hat and a corn cop pipe and he's smoking it up, you know, and Greg's got a beard, he's in a rocking chair. There's this perfect church building like in the middle of a field on, at Paramount Ranch. And uh, right. it was a gas, man. Um, <laughs> just shooting that and getting all those, you know, really 
in and out, funny fish sure. eye and panning around his shots. And I think it's going to be a really great video. Uh, so Swamp Thing, uh, Steve, watch for the release. Desert Dragon is going to be a mm -hmm. blast. It's Very be cool. A, and when, and when do you think... When do you think that's coming? Month or so, or uh, yeah, yeah, probably about a month or so. Okay, all yeah, right. More shots to to complete, and it's we're over a long distance, but um, sure, yeah, it, it, it's going to be funny and it's going to be killer. We're we're actually waiting for the prosthetic, actual Swamp Thing suit. Nice. <laughs> In, in the Godzilla movies, I don't know if you ever saw online, oh, yeah. you know, the, the little Japanese guys, when they took off the hood of the suit, you could see them right. in the little rubber suit of what it was. So <laughs> somebody's actually making something for the swamp thing. And so yeah. there's, uh, whoever wears it uh, can come up out of the swamp. And, and that'll and be whatever. awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll be awesome, man. As is the, the release, this side of heaven. It is Desert Dragon. And, uh, Keith, what I thought we would do is we'd wrap with um, with uh, the, the single that you guys have, um, the video that's out there now. We'll play a little piece of that. So, um, Keith, uh, sure. Keith, obviously, people should check you out with Kingdom Come when you're in their town, and they should check you out with Desert Dragon online. And if and when... Desert Dragon gets out there to get in your town. So, uh, Keith, thanks so much for joining us here on Chris Aiken Presents. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. And, guys, go to go to KeithStJohn.com, and all this uh, and, and more will be there. And uh, be nice. Look forward to seeing you soon, man. Very cool. Thank you, man. Good meeting you, brother. Nice meeting you, bud. All right, take care. Talk to you soon, man. All right, bro. Take yeah, care. I love the background. Keep pulling the trigger. Mama, it's time to